Hi there. Terry Bailey, Senior Minister of Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio. When to follow up on my last series, which was on the sin of partiality, with a new series on the sin of pride. These things are related, as you recall, the word for partiality is to lift up someone else's face to make them think more of themselves than they ought. Pride is the same sort of operation, only you do it to yourself, not to someone else. In, in the Old Testament, almost every usage that gets translated pride is from a word family that means heights or loftiness. And it is this idea of trying to lift yourself up to the heights that is translated pride. There are uh, just a few places in the Old Testament where the word would be more like presumption, but the vast majority translated pride is an effort to get yourself to the heights. Think of the Tower of Babel as an excellent exercise in pride. And every reference to pride in either testament is a negative reference. The closest you can come to a positive concerns an animal where it is said in Job that the scales of the Leviathan are his pride, and there is no condemnation in that, but we're not talking about a human being there. In every instance where pride is cited, it is cited as a negative. And what I want to do in this series is take an example from the different categories of literature, one from the law, one from the wisdom literature, one from the prophets, one from the history literature, one from the gospels, one from the epistles, just for a fair sampling of the many references to pride. As I said, in the Old Testament, the word has to do with lifting yourself up to a height or lofty place. In the New Testament, it is more generally uh, vain boasting is the idea that gets translated pride. That is saying that I am or can do something when I can't back up my claim. This would be pride. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to start with an instance from the law, and this is from Leviticus chapter 26, verse 19. Uh, God speaking to the Israelites as he sets them up as a nation. He says, I will also break down your pride of power, and I will make your sky like iron and your earth like bronze. I'll go on just another verse. Your strength will be spent uselessly, for your land will not yield its produce, and the trees of the land will not yield their fruit. Now, if you back up, this is a section where God says, if you remain faithful to me, I will do these things, all of which are good. But if you decide you don't need me, and you have no interest in my ordinances, or my help, then I will do these things. And they're all negative. And among the negative things that God says he will do if the Israelites decide they don't need him anymore is that he will break down their pride of power. And there is a prediction here. The reason they might come to think they don't need him anymore is because they come to think they can handle things on their own quite well. And then I'm not obligated to God. I'm not obligated to keep his commandments. If I am the source of all the good things that come to me, if I look at my table and said, I grew those grapes, I raised that uh, beef, goat, chicken, whatever it may be, 
I squeezed those olives, I did the tilling, I did the fertilizing, I am my own benefactor, thank you, me, and what need have I for God? Well, except that I used his earth, which he made and gave to me and placed me as a steward over except that I used seeds which are his creation and I can't make them. Believe me, make me start from scratch. I cannot produce a seed to grow grapes or olives or anything else, except that I used the skill and the gifts which he has lent me as an individual, except that I trusted in his rain and sun and all of those other things. Yes, except for all that, I did it all by myself. Well, you see how foolish that is. And when you begin to think, I did it by myself without need for anything from God. You are raising yourself up and trying to occupy this lofty position. And God said to the Israelites, even as he began to establish them as a nation following their departure from Egypt, if you get to this place, I will break your pride of power. In part, that requires only that God step back a little bit. If you think you can do it all by yourself, including defending yourself against the nations that surround you, have that and let's see how that turns out. And sometimes God will take a more active step. But one way and another, he will break our pride of power. He will cure us of this tendency to try to occupy the lofty high places ourselves without recourse to him, or we will not be his people. One of these two things must happen. Our pride must be cured, or we cannot be the people of God. Here is the first lesson in pride from the law if you would pray with me father bless our understanding as we begin to take these scriptures into consideration and help us not to think so highly of ourselves that we try to walk away from our need for you for we ask it in jesus name amen